Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of the series and we have updated out of our previous version into InfDev 2010-0615 and we've got a few things to do here and first of all we're in a tree because in the previous version it wouldn't correctly save that chunks had been populated so all of our things have gotten repopulated once more so that forest that we cut down last time is all back. So we've got quite a few, few things to do. It involves quite a lot of traveling. So first of all, we're going to need to go out about 10,000 blocks to go and generate a monolith because I got rather unlucky with this seed. So we're going to do that first. And what's even worse is that the F3 debug menu doesn't even exist yet. And it won't even show coordinates until alpha 1.2.3, which we won't even be visiting in this version. So that's going to be fun. So to read my coordinates, I have to occasionally save the game and then open the level.dat file with an MBT editor to even see where I am and get a bearing of where I'm going. So that's going to be fun. And now... As finally, we have doors. Let's finally make the indev house an indev home. So let's go get a little bit of wood here. Oh, I don't even have enough here. Okay, but that's good. And just a few planks. <laughs> the textures <laughs> doesn't have the windows on the item. But as you can see, when we place it, it has the windows. Oh, that's some nostalgia right there. Lovely. Just music to my ears. So, well, let's get on with this. What's going to be very boring journey.
Okay, so after an hour of walking and a lot of swimming, because boats don't exist yet, we have finally reached the location on our seed of a monolith. Now, the reason that these happen is because the terrain generation code essentially is bugged and allows for a value known as the hill generator to go negative. Now, when this happens, which is not supposed to, well, what the hill generator determines is basically uh, the estimated height of the terrain map. So, the closer it gets to zero, the flatter the world is. The higher it is, the more variation is allowed in sea level. But what happens when it goes negative is that it kind of inverts the world generation. And underneath of here, instead of being solid, it will be hollow. If I can find where it starts anyways. There we go. You can see the old infinite lava lake that used to be bedrock below it. And it fills with water because it's below ocean level. So, we mostly just went here to generate it. There's not much else to do here. And I really do not feel like walking back, but I guess I will. So, here we are, finally back after that two-hour journey to a honestly disappointing monolith. And I'm just here cooking up some of my food that I got from the journey, which I think is fitting because the next glitch we will be dealing with is with furnaces. Now, furnaces technically have two blocks whenever they're in operation. They have this lit state, which just disappeared, and the unlit state, which are two different block IDs. So, if we get it into the lit state, and then we break it, which is going to take a little while, because they don't have a correct tool set. It looks like it drops to normal furnace. However, we, we just make a second one here. You will see that it does not stack. So these are in fact two different items. And if I place it, it will stay lit until I put something else in it. So, let's make a few of these real quick. So, here we are with nine lit furnaces collected that now we can put into our chest of goodies to update to future versions. So, our next glitch is with the newly imported fluid system that was imported from InDev into InfDev in this version. So, let's run over the basics of this system. So, we have water, and lava, and both of them can be placed with buckets and will flow down in stages, and both of them will flow eight blocks. Now this is changed so that lava will only flow four blocks in just a few versions. You can also see that when you put sources together, they will form an infinite source, and this will happen with both water and with lava. Now, another interesting property, along with lava flowing longer than it should, is that liquids will not interact. They will not form anything between them. So, let's get on building a showcase for this interesting glitch. So, I've finished gathering some materials for building this exhibit, and I've kind of marked out the area of where I'd like it to go. I kind of imagine that eventually this entire island or area of the island will pretty much just be kind of a kind of like an outdoor museum of all the things we've collected. And this is definitely one of the bigger exhibits that we'll need to build.
Okay, here we go. So, I'll just put a block on top so I can build the roof. And... Build a little walkway that I can use. Ooh, I might run out of glass, actually. Now run! Yeah, I'm definitely not going to have enough glass. Oh. Well, suppose I'll... Whoopsies. Let's see. This is why shift is so nice. Oh, I misplaced. Oh. Uh, can I get to this without destroying another? I don't think I can. Uh, that's a bummer. Okay. Just got the roof. I'll just cap this off because if we cause any update to this, say by placing redstone next to it, oh, that's another misplaced glass. Uh, in the future, if we cause any updates to this, it will instantly all revert back to its normal length. So that's why we're encasing it in its entirety. Oh, I'm just short on enough glass. Thankfully, I have more sand because I didn't cook it all up. All right, so that is the main exhibit of the long lava completed. I think it looks wonderful. So we're going to build two more exhibits to show off the other part of this bug of fluids not interacting. So after that creeper decided to give me a run for my money, we finally have the fluid exhibit completed. We have both the long lava exhibit over here, and we have the missing interaction between water and lava over here. And I think considering the severely limited block palette we have in this version, I think it turned out pretty well. So. I think it is about time to say goodbye to InfDev 2010-0615 and make a quick pit stop in InfDev 2010-0625-2. So, I'll see you there. Alright, so we are here in 
0625-2 because this version was the very first version to have spawners included. And you might say, how are we going to obtain spawners? Well, in our cloth chests, this chest has now been replaced with spawners. And if I open any of these other ones, it will crash my game. But in this version, spawners had the same tile entity ID as a sign. Let's just make one real quick. Okay, there we go. So any spawner that is placed in the world in this version will act as a pig spawner, as they do, and will spawn pigs. But as soon as we update out of this version, it will turn into a sign spawner. So let's just make a really quick little exhibit for this guy. Just extend our road a little bit. Make a little platform for it. And then this version will be finished. Alright, so there we go. And as you can see, it did spawn pigs, as in this version, it will function exactly as a spawner should. But, as you can see, when we go to our next version of Alpha 1.0.6, this will change into something else. So, here we are in Alpha 1.0.6, which is kindly displayed in the corner, and you can see that the spawner looks a little different. Now, the reason it looks like this is because it still has the empty texture of the spawner block. However, the tile entity of the block still renders inside of it as a sign. So, this is just a fun little block that you can have. You can't do anything with this. It won't spawn signs or anything like that. So, yep. Let's finally label it. Sign Spawner. Perfect. So after a short expedition to go and get some cacti, which were introduced in this version, we are now going to display another bug due to cacti not being completed. As you can see, the cactus is a full block when placed and can be placed on anything. And in fact, can even float, or be placed next to other cacti. Essentially, cacti is missing a lot of the placement restrictions that it has in modern versions. So, and also you can see that when you punch it to break it, it damages you. Which is quite annoying. However, we have a lot of bread, so... It is not a problem. So let's make a little quick exhibit of the things that you're normally not able to do. Place a cacti on a non-sand block. Place cacti next to each other. Place something directly on top of a cactus. Ow. Uh, let's do you. And put some torches on it. It appears that the cacti damage code runs whether you left or right click, so that's... Ugh, I can see why they changed this quite quickly. There we go. I think that's pretty cursed. And sign cursed cat die. There we go. So now it is time to get to the part that you've all been waiting for, the far lands. And to get there, we'll have to update yet again to alpha 1.2.2. So here we are in alpha version 1.2.2. Three re-upload. 
Now, the reason we are in this version is because it has a leftover debug feature from adding the nether to client side uh, games. So, the debug feature is simply let's try and stand away from the lava because it can cause bad things to happen. If we press F4, a nether portal will be generated. Not always on top of you like I just got, which is kind of lucky. But it will generate a nether portal in a valid location using the nether portal generation code that is normally used in the game. When a portal does not exist and it needs to create a new one. So the reason we need nether portals to reach the far lands is not because we're just going to dig a really long tunnel in the nether, but rather there exists a teleportation glitch utilizing the nether. So simply, if we get a boat, and we place it into the nether portal like this, and if we get into the boat and let it teleport us through, it will not divide our coordinates by eight, placing us at our overworld coordinates in the nether. I think you know where this is going. So, once again, the debug menu sort of exists, but does not tell me my coordinates. So I'm going to have to pull a good old crack open the level dot dat every once in a while to get my coordinates so that I know where I am. So, let's travel to the Far Lands. So here we are at one and a half million in the nether. Now, this portal, if I go through it, will place me at the far lands. However, I cannot go through it in Alpha 1.2.2 because it will crash the game. So we will have to do a real quick version upgrade here to be able to generate the far lands. Gonna be honest, 
that took less than 10 minutes of travel time, which is absolutely fantastic. And this method, I first saw in a video by Puffingfish HQ, so a huge shout out to him so that I can generate the Far Lands without having to teleport myself out there or spend nine months walking there. So, we'll be back. So we have updated completely out of alpha, straight into beta, specifically 1.2 underscore 02, to finally generate the far lands. And since F3 screen does exist now with coordinates, you can see that I am one and a half million blocks out in the nether. So, let's walk through. And make sure my render distance is big. Ooh, oh, that is... There they are. There it is. I'm surprised my game is doing this well. The Far Lands are very laggy. I don't really remember why they're so laggy. I believe it's either due to just the very large numbers being computed, or it's due to falling sand and gravel. I don't remember. But essentially, the reason the Far Lands exist... Ooh, here comes the lag. Uh, let's... Let's see if I can... Oh, it is not going away. Um, well, the reason the Far Lands generate is because Minecraft's noise map value essentially increases by 613-ish per block. Ooh, oh, the game is not doing well. But... The random noise value that is sampled in the 3D Perlin noise generator will increase by 600 plus ish each block. Now, at the coordinates of 12,550,764, 12, that, well, you get the idea. That value will exceed the 32 bit. Un, uh, unsigned integer limit and will overflow into a negative or underflow, I'm sorry. And it will cause the Far Lands to generate. Now, my game is basically dead at this point. So... Oh, well, I guess I just answered my question. The answer is yes. It is due to all the falling sand entities because there are 17,000 of them and it is increasing the longer I have the game open. Um, well, I guess it's time to get back to spawn. Fun. Alright, so after using the method, but in the reverse of transferring my nether coordinates into my overworld coordinates, I have returned to spawn without having to die. That was very laggy due to the 20,000 plus sand entities that were created, but I'm still very glad to have been able to generate the far lands and also very happy that we can go there in future versions using other travel exploits. And hopefully it'll be a little more stable. But this episode has already gotten long enough, so I think that's it for this time. So make sure to like and subscribe, because it helps me seriously. Thank you.